Colin Nathaniel Eaton. Hey, um, well, I've been thinking a lot recently about um, happiness and wondering if in my sort of crazy New York lifestyle, if I had found a, a bit of happiness or a, a true happiness. And it got me thinking about uh, my childhood. When I was a kid, I used to spend the night uh, in my backyard, uh, just kind of camped out under the stars. And it, it was truly a simple moment, but just a very happy moment. And I did this a lot, camping out in my backyard, because I had this obsession with being marooned on a desert island. And I thought about this all the time. Uh, you know, my other friends were playing with the G.I. Joes and the, the Transformers, and I was in my backyard building these very elaborate survival shelters and sort of collecting rainwater in buckets and, like, cracking coconuts that my mom bought me from the supermarket. And we would, yeah, I mean, I would have sleepovers. My friends would come over, but w I never wanted to sleep inside. We'd, we'd have to sleep out in the backyard and no tents or anything, like, no sleeping bags. We would get in my shelter and... If you put leaves on top of yourself, it keeps all the body heat in. So we would be down there under the stars with the leaves. And uh, I, I, who knows if I grew out of this, but you know, I went to high school and I discovered acting. And it's just like dressing up, doing different accents. It was just nuts. I got very obsessed with it. So it's, it's sort of like maybe my dream changed from sleeping under the stars to becoming a star because I went to college and studied theater and it was a very intensive bunch of theater folks and we would we did all sorts of shows we'd stay up late at night talking about you know stardom and you know, that you know how was, that would be a great thing if we could do that then we could act all the time and and then we started to think about well how would we know if we were really a star I mean, is there some sort of like checklist or something? Is it, you know, do you have a, a billboard of you? Are you on the cover of Premier Magazine? And I guess maybe we had been drinking whiskey, but we thought that, you know, the true test that you were a star is if they made an action figure of you. You know, like Han Solo and Luke Skywalker, those were the big time stars. So we, we graduated from college, we hit New York City like a storm, and we were doing all sorts of crazy theater and basements and, you know, leaky pipes and stuff like that. And I spent a lot of time waiting tables and kind of just waiting for my, my thing to hit. And then one day, my agent calls me and says, hey, you booked that McDonald's commercial that you were auditioning for. And I was like, whoa, great. And, um, so I went for two days and filmed this set of McDonald's commercials where I was playing this character called the Chicken Man, where I, I drive my chicken truck around the country and say things like, you gotta love the chicken and you know, eat the chicken, love the chicken. And uh, <laughs> we shot for two days and they made 10 commercials out of this thing. And they started to play all the time on every single channel. It was like during the Super Bowl and, and during the, you know, the, the football. And, and people started to recognize me on the street. They're like, hey, chicken man. I'm like, oh, <laughs> hey. And, and people wanted to, to take photos of me, you know, me and them in a photo. And they wanted my autograph. And it's just started, I would go into McDonald's and they had like the posters of me. And, and like a bus would go by and there's the... I'm on the side of the bus, oh my God. And then I heard that McDonald's was making, for the Happy Meal, they were making the chicken van toy. And I was like, wow. So I go in and get the Happy Meal and, and I see the chicken van and who's driving the chicken van? But there's a little action figure of me. And I'm like, I mean, no kidding. I'm like, oh God, here's an action figure of me. And the, on the bus, does this mean I'm a, a star? Selling nuggets? But I'll, I'll tell you the truth, I, I didn't, I mean, I just sort of felt like I had cheated the system somehow. It, it's not like I won an Academy Award or, you know, I, I was in a De Niro movie. I was selling nuggets for McDonald's. So I went back to my theater company, and about three months later, my mom called me. She was very, very excited. She's like, Nathaniel, have you heard? They are looking for 16 people to maroon on a desert island for this TV show. And whoever stays there the longest is going to win a million bucks. And I'm like, oh my God, this is my role of a lifetime. I've been preparing my whole life, cracking the coconuts and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, I'm thinking, this is it. This is my ticket. And um, 
so I like go to CBS.com and I download the, uh, the, the this like extensive long application. It's like 30 pages of questions, but I approach it like this Harvard application. And when I'm done with it, I, I, I burn the edges sort of like this pirate's map and stuff. But the most important part of this application was this three minute audition video where I had to convince the judges that I was perfect material for Survivor. And I knew this was gonna seal the deal. So I got my NYU uh, sort of filmmaker friends and we plotted this like amazing film noir like black and white, you know, video, three minute video that sort of, you know, kind of opens up in darkness and you hear this like, you know, tribal drumming and, uh, and, then, and then the picture opens and I'm, there's me, I'm like drumming on the side of this dumpster, you know, wearing this like New York suit and I, then I climb into the dumpster and I'm eating, you know, the pieces of pizza and stuff like that. And then I'm going down the alleyway and I, I've got this like machete, you know, in my belt and I, and I start, I find a broom and I start like carving it into the spear. And then I, I see there's like an old dirty tire and I get the soot and I'm like making tribal designs on my face. But we realized there had to be this big ending to this video, like the button that would seal the deal and get me cast. It had to all be building up to something. And we discovered the answer was that I, I was doing all this stuff for the great hunt of the wild automobile. And so the ending of this video was I'm gonna be in Times Square with my spear, just like throwing it at, at yellow cabs going by. Um, well, we shot this all in one day um, in my neighborhood in bed -Stuy, and. Um, as it was getting towards the end of the day when we were getting to the, the finale scene and the director goes, oh, let's just shoot it here. We can't make it all the way to Times Square. I'm like, great. And you know, my girlfriend's in the other room kind of, kind of laughing. She kind of thinks this is a little bit immature. Um, you know, we're all very intensively planning this. She's like, why don't you do it naked? <laughs> and I think that's a great idea. She's like, yeah, put rollerblades. Do it naked with rollerblades. I'm like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so... There I am, it's like I'm 20 blocks away from my house because we had to find the perfect intersection. Couldn't, you know, I didn't want it to be too crowded, but not too desolate. And I've got my rollerblades on and I'm sort of like crouched between these two parked cars and I, I take off my clothes and I've got war paint all over my whole body now. I've got my spear and my friend's setting up the camera on the other side. He's like, oh, this is gonna be great and get you cast. And I'm sitting there and I'm waiting for a yellow cab to go by. And, and then, then I see the yellow cab go and I, I get out and I start skating and I've never skated naked before the breezes are different and <laughs> and then I just throw the spear and like imagine it's just like sails in this perfect arc and hits the back of the car and the car just drives off and I go and I grab the spear and I'm like yeah and I turn around and then the a bottle flies by my head and smashes onto the ground. And, and, and I turn around to look and there are these three gigantic guys running full speed at me like, like gang members going we are gonna kill you motherfucker And I turn and start skating. My friend, he's got like my clothes in his camera. He's just like jetting off in one direction. I start skating as fast as I can, like rocks crashing next to me. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to use the spear or something like that. I'm like just kind of going and I'm like going around the corner, around another corner and finally I lose them. And I'm just whew, trying to catch my breath. I cannot believe what happened. I don't know where my friend is. He just took off and I, I realize I have to get home and I'm 20 blocks away and I'm naked, and, and this is like Sunday late afternoon and it's a nice day, there's people out on their stoops, families, people doing their laundry, hanging out at the bodega, and I, so I just, you know, I start skating home, and I don't, I have the broom, and so I, the, the little fan part I kind of just hold, just so, kind of skating, and I get back, and my, my friend, He's sitting on the front stoop. He's like, I got it all on tape. It's fantastic. You are totally getting cast. That night, we're at the local bar, and we're, we're celebrating. We're telling the story. And my downstairs neighbor, who happens to be an entertainment editor for the Sunday Post, he's there. He hears the whole story. He's like, listen, we're doing a Sunday extravaganza funny thing about all the crazy stunts people are doing to get on Survivor, and we'd love to feature you. It would be hilarious. And so I get interviewed, and I'm telling my whole story. We're laughing on the phone. And then uh, Friday comes. I go to work, and all my coworkers are like, Nathaniel, are you all right? I mean, we didn't think you were gonna come in. Are, are, weren't you in the hospital? I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, did you see the front page of the post today? I'm like, no, what? And I, they show me the post, and on the bottom, it says, wannabe survivor barely survives bed <laughs> And I turn 
not to the entertainment section, but the, the front page news, and it's this whole detailed article about how I'm almost murdered wearing face paint that sort of looked like, like blackface in a very dangerous neighborhood, and what was I doing? And, and then my friend said, and you were all over Howard Stern. He kept talking about how you were the stupidest man in the universe, and he wants you on the show. I get home that night, and there, there's like seven messages from Howard Stern. He wants to get me on the show the next day, reenact the whole thing, bring in gang members, have me naked with war paint, and he thinks it would be great. I'm like, whoa, what? My friend's like, you gotta do it. This is your ticket. This will make you a star, Howard Stern. But you know, I, I guess I just already had my 15 minutes you know, with the McDonald's thing, and it just <laughs> didn't. The Howard Stern sort of felt the same. And the New York Post had also published this article that said they are looking for contestants who, who don't seek media attention, who aren't doing crazy stunts. So I'm just like trying to suddenly like smash it. I'm just like, I want to be on Survivor so badly. Please, no, no Howard Stern. Just let me get on that island. And um, so I send in the videotape. It's fantastic. And, um, I wait, like a week goes by, two weeks, and I'm waiting by the phone for the, uh, for the call. And, and then the New York Post once again publishes an article that says, of the 50,000 videotapes submitted, the 16 survivors have been selected. And I hadn't gotten the call. And I was feeling just really disappointed. And uh, you know, I just felt like you know, if anyone was qualified, <laughs> I would have loved to be on the show. And uh, <laughs> so I went back to my theater company, and um, about Four months later, the New York Post calls me once again, and they're like, Nathaniel, you know, we, we're sorry how things went down, but uh, we, it was a travel section. And they're like, you know, we got this press trip that just came across our desk where they want us to send a reporter to Kenya where they film Survivor. And we thought, hey, well, why don't we send that guy who wanted to get on Survivor but never got on? And, uh, you know, would you like to go? And, and, and I said, sure, that would be great. Next thing I know, I'm in Kenya, standing on this dry riverbed in the exact same place that they filmed Survivor. And I'm looking around, and I'm, there's no sets or anything. It's all, it's all happened before. But you know, as I look around, I, I could just imagine all those guys. I'd seen the show, and I just watched every episode. I loved it so much. And, and I, I could look around. There's, you know, it's just the wilderness, the wild animals all around. And I realize I want to sleep right there, under the stars, like I did when I was a kid. And uh, you know, I tell the guys this, and they're like, uh, I don't think so. And, uh, but then I found out that the, uh, the local tribe had this thing called a star bed, where they, uh, it was this beautiful bed, you know, all white down comforters on this like rickety old wagon. And they would wheel sort of like newlywed couples out to wherever they wanted to so they could sleep under the stars. And they said, hey, you could do this. So I said, yes. And I got wheeled to the exact place on that riverbed, and they had these amazing tribe members with like real spears this time and they, they created a perimeter around me about 20 feet away to protect from the real animals and I, I sat there and I, I slept right there in that beautiful bed under the stars and I, I just asked myself are you are you happy now have you found happiness and I had thank you <laughs>